there's one important assumption for the difference in different estimation that we have to discuss. It's a so-called parable trends assumption. Consider um, the data here on the right. So we have a, a treatment group and uh, a pre-experimental period and a period where the experimental takes place here on the right and also control group in red. So if we just look graphically at this data set, is it plausible that in this setting, the difference in difference estimator consistently estimates the causal effect of the treatment? And I guess most people would say no. The problem is that already in the pre-experimental phase, the, the treatment group and the control group have very different time trends. You know? So these curves, they don't uh, move in parallel. And if we now estimate some change between the differences in the control group and treatment group in the pre-experimental and post-experimental phase, it's not really clear whether that change is due to the experiment or just because these time trends moved uh, uh, further. Maybe um, the control group went down further uh, because it has this seemingly negative time trend while we have not such a negative time trend for the treatment group. So. A, a crucial assumption for the difference the difference estimator to consistently estimate the causal of a effect of a treatment is the so-called parallel trends assumption. It means that if no experiment would take place, the difference between the average outcome and the, the treatment and control groups should be constant over time. So the differences between the blue and the red curve should be constant. I mean, the difference will never be exactly constant, but it should be systematically constant and only uh, be some random fluctuation between these uh, ways, but it should move nicely in parallel. So we don't know how, whether the curve should have been in parallel in the experimental phase, because it should be parallel if there was no experiment, but we can at least check in the phase before the experiment, whether these curves run most in parallel or not. And typically this is just checked graphically. So one looks by eyesight, is there do this curve run in parallel? And here for example would say no, that doesn't really the curves don't run in parallel, then it's not really convincing that the difference in different estimation consistently estimates the causal effect. Okay, so that's a very important assumption, this parallel trends assumptions. Um, and if we look at our original data set, at least by eyesight, it looks quite good. You know, see so these average revenues in the treatment and control group, they seem at least in the pre-experimental period, really move nicely parallel uh, to each other. So here one by eyesight one would be relatively convinced at least from this graph, one also has to think about the setting and so on, but that the parallel trend assumption may be well satisfied, while in the example, the fictitious numbers I showed you on the other slides, this is less convincing. Let's summarize the chapter. So difference in difference estimation is a powerful method and also a quite intuitive method to estimate causal effects. So we need to observe data before and during the treatment intervention. And sometimes also afterwards, it may also be helpful. And it can, for example, be used in experiments where the assignment to the control and treatment group is not perfectly random. And that is often the case. Often there are certain restrictions that don't allow you a perfectly random assignment. Then it's really important that you also gather data from before the experiment so that you will be able to uh, perform such a difference in difference estimation. And it can also be used in non-experimental settings. So if you want to examine some policy changes, sometimes this is then called a natural experiment. For example, in the r problem set, uh, you will estimate the causal effect of an increase in minimum wages on employment using a difference in difference approach. However, it does not always work this difference in difference approach. So par particular, the parallel trend assumption must be satisfied or it must at least be 
convincing that it is satisfied. Um, this is not always the case, in particular in non-experimental settings. And often the main problem is to find a suitable control group in a non-experimental setting so that it's really convincing that this parallel trend assumption is not violated. Yeah, and you will look at one example in the actual problem set and maybe depending on how much time we have in the course, we will also look at, at other examples later on. That's all.